In the not-so-distant future, London has fallen victim to a series of terror attacks. The corrupt paramilitary organization Albion has taken control of the city. This new oppressive authoritarian regime has a stranglehold in the citizens of London. Ubiquitous surveillance, deadly drones, and all manner of technology leave no measure of privacy, safety, or true freedom. In Ubisoft's latest game, Watch Dogs Legion, the fate of London is in your hands. I'm Erica Ishii. I'm working with DeadSec, an underground organization whose goal is to overthrow the current regime and restore London to its former glory. But we can't do this alone. We need you to search the streets of London for capable citizens that you can recruit into your DedSec operative team. Together, you must bring an end to Albion's reign of terror. Welcome to the Resistance. Watch Dogs Legion boasts a near endless roster of unique characters found all throughout the city. And the best part is, you can play as absolutely any of them. Yeah! You could be him. Or her. <laughs> or her. Or even him. There's virtually no limit to who you can recruit into your dead sec team. Watch Dogs Legion takes you to the cutting edge of technology as you hack your way into and out of all sorts of trouble. I've recruited my own team to dive a little deeper into the real world tech present in the game. Marcus Hutchins is credited with thwarting one of the largest cyber crimes in history with experience on both sides of the law. Can you tell me the difference between white hat hacking and black hat hacking? Yes, yeah, so black hat hacking is the criminal side of hacking. These are people who hack outside the law. They do it for money, for fame. Whereas white hat hacking, say, uh, a company might contract me to hack their network uh, to show them how it can be hacked so they, they, can, they can patch it. Well, now. The major difference is uh, one side is sanctioned by both the law and the, the people you target whereas the black hat hacking is just straight up kind of crime. So you've successfully made the transition from black hat to white hat. Do you miss black hat? I kind of, I hated the criminal side of it. So if there were a hybrid where you could just, there was no scope, there were no limits, but it was legal, that would, that would be my thing. There are many electronic billboards throughout London which display Albion propaganda. Players are able to hack into these and replace them with DedSec messages. In the real world, we've seen people hacking billboards or road signs. I think I saw one that was warning people of raptors ahead. What are some of the motivations behind those hackings? It's just really a laugh. So a lot of people don't expect billboards can be hacked. So just seeing one with uh, like some silly message, it's usually just for entertainment. As a DedSec operative in the game, you're often called upon to commandeer a vehicle by hacking into its computer. What kind of training do you need to hack an autonomous vehicle? Just hypothetically. <laughs> So it would depend a lot on uh, what system the vehicle is running. Some cars is everything. You might need uh, a remote route exploit to get onto the car's console. And then from there, you would be able to control everything connected to the computer. It, it's not to say they can't be hacked. It's just unlikely that someone would have the skill to hack it who would be interested in doing that maliciously. So can you teach me a couple of black hat? Uh-oh. Drones can also be hacked into in Watch Dogs Legion and repurposed for many different uses. No sign of the target. Over. Parcel Fox is the in-game equivalent to what is now beginning to roll out, using drones for package delivery. Though you may find some more creative uses for Parcel Fox. 
Gregory S. McNeil has consulted with the Defense Department on counterterrorism and founded a drone company that has sold technology to the U.S. military and government agencies around the world. How many years away are we from drones becoming ubiquitous in cities? We're really at an interesting inflection point right now, particularly in the United States. We're only about four years away wow. from regular operations of package delivery drones by regulation, so by rule, where it'll be permitted. How is air traffic control? Unmanned traffic management in the United States or U-Space in Europe. This system is part government and part private. And so companies will plug into this system and they'll share the locations of their drones with a government system that will determine places where drones are allowed to fly and not allowed to fly. In the game, you're able to hop on a drone as a mode of transportation. This is a highly useful way to circumvent some of Albion's security measures. Could drone transport become the way of the future? It wouldn't exactly be someone jumping on the back of a drone, but instead sort of getting into an air taxi on the roof of a building, something along those lines. But you could imagine that if a drone was large enough and capable of delivering a package of 185 pounds, let's say, then someone would be able to jump on the back of that drone and be able to ride it. Anything's in the realm of possibility. Many of the drones in Watch Dogs Legion are weaponized. Militaries throughout the world have been using drones in warfare for many years now, but these types of drones look quite different from what we see in the game. Can smaller, what we think of as consumer model drones, be weaponized? Examples of weaponized consumer drones are all over the internet. This is reality today. People are putting firearms on drones, they're putting Roman candles on drones. There was even an example in the United States of a teenager who put a flamethrower on a drone. This is a present day reality and what you see in the game is totally possible. So you specialized in how drones target people. What's that technology like right now? With drone targeting technology, the targeting window, the, what is being seen, is seen by multiple people. So there's a greater amount of accountability that's inserted into what's known as the kill chain. One of the troubling aspects of this, though, becomes what happens when artificial intelligence becomes inserted into this and the human is taken out of the loop. What kind of data needs to go into that decision chain for an AI? If you're targeting something like a vehicle or a tank or something like that, artificial intelligence is pretty capable of doing that type of thing. But if you're trying to distinguish people in an urban environment, that's really difficult to do. Even if you're using something like facial recognition technology, which is very prone to errors. One of the interesting things that the military does is they use cell phones. And so they track your cell phone and then they associate the cell phone with the moving person. The safety and ethics ramifications of weaponized drones Dr. Jacqueline Ford Morey is highly educated in the fields of art and computer science, with over 25 years of experience developing virtual reality and augmented reality content. Can you tell me about the distinction between virtual reality and augmented reality? The big basic difference is in virtual reality, you shut out the physical world. And in augmented reality, you're adding to the physical world. And that is really the core difference. Facial analysis matches for both. In Watch Dogs Legion, you're able to generate three-dimensional AR holograms that recreate past events from security footage. This can be used as an investigative tool to help your characters uncover otherwise mysterious events. You want to see how this cliffhanger gets resolved? Fucker! Get it! Before we see this! Fuck! He's getting away! Get after him! Shit! In the game, there is this wonderful thing about AR reconstruction, 
So that's being able to look back in time and see something that actually happened in an AR overlay in the space where it happened. We're not there yet. What it would take to do something like a reconstruction of an event that had happened is a little outside of, of what AR can do because most things that we experience with AR technology are constructed well ahead of time. You would basically need a network of cameras, much like the surveillance cameras that are all over London, but they would have to be special cameras that were outfitted to capture someone in 3D as they were moving in that location. Those kinds of cameras are not really available yet. We have some of it happening in stages where we can get volumetric capture of people, but they're not widely distributed. So it's gonna be a while before we can do that. But that would change AR from being something that's constructed ahead of time to something that can be reconstructed from captured data. What are some of the other practical applications of AR? One of the biggest application areas is training. You're able to put someone in a situation where they absolutely feel like they are there. So whether it's a surgeon practicing surgery on a, a, a mannequin, but seeing the organs overlaid in AR, or heads up displays for fighter pilots, so they could have all the information in front of them in the cockpit, not have to look down at the instruments. What do you see in the future of AR? So today, the reality we know keeps AR and VR separate. But in the future, I don't think we're gonna put them in little boxes. It's just all going to be what we experience as life. It's all gonna be one reality. I think we're gonna see a future in the Warning, warning. Albion soldiers have breached the building. Warning, warning. Albion soldiers have breached the building. Hello? As we've seen, the Tekken Watchdogs Legion isn't that far off in our future. Dead Tech is gonna need all the help we can get! Ubisoft's Watchdogs Legion is coming to Xbox on October 29th. And with smart delivery, you'll automatically have the game if you buy it and then upgrade from Xbox One to Xbox Series X on November 10th.